to make a series of videos uh, that show how you can create stitching uh, in SolidWorks. Uh, you know, it's not that realistic, uh, but uh, you know, it's something that can uh, you know, fairly quickly illustrate you know, something that is stitched. Uh, and from a distance, you know, it might look uh, fairly good. Um, uh, and I, I want to show uh, methods on how to do this kind of single stitching along here and then this cross stitch uh, where you join two things together. Um, so uh, to do that, let's, uh, I'm going to, let's see, let's get rid of everything. Uh, yeah, so from here to here. Okay, that's good, and that's good. So yeah, got them all. Right, so first let's do the uh, single stitch that kind of goes around the perimeter here. Now because this is in two sections, um, I'm going to have to do just one side and mirror it, which is probably a better uh, workflow anyway. Uh, but uh, to do that, let's come to our sketch. Let's start a 3D sketch. And from here, let's do an offset on surface feature and let's pick this and you can set our distance in this case uh, I want to use one millimeter I'll just want it kind of right around the perimeter there uh, and then just say okay and so that gives me a 3d sketch now uh, you can see it's made up of several sketch entities along here and I want just one continuous entity kind of running around half the perimeter uh, here uh, and then I'll make a separate one that runs along the middle uh, to drive the stitches that go up here. I, I, potentially I could use this one but I, I want one that's kind of centered up just in case. Um, so uh, to do that I could delete I could delete this part and um, convert these uh, entities but I'm just going to say okay to this leave it as a sketch then start a new 3D sketch that this way I have them all as kind of separate entities. Um, and uh, what I want to do here is pick these entities that I want to use and then come to Tools, Spline Tools, Fit Spline. And fit Spline will take a look at all those sketch entities uh, and then you convert them to one single one. Um, and you know, if I had something real tight, like you know, trying to make that turn right here, I would want to make a pretty small tolerance uh, on it so it would fit that. Or if I wanted kind of a curve here, I could leave this kind of big. But it, I'm not using this one anyway, so I'm just going to let the defaults um, you know, run as is. Uh, make sure it's not closed, uh, I'm not deleting anything, uh, and just say OK. And let's exit that sketch. And let's come back over here. I can hide my uh, wait a minute uh, is that adding it as okay looks like it put it in so let's undo that Let's exit that and let's start a new 3D sketch. Now let's pick these guys. Sorry, I may have been going a little fast there and not made a second sketch. Yeah, so now with that done, let's do uh, tools, spline tools, fit spline. I'm going to leave the defaults. Say OK. Now I should be able to say OK to the sketch. And right now I have a second sketch, and so I can hide this first one. And I should have one here that's right just that uh, spline uh, along there. Now let, let's make some 3D sketches uh, that we can use to create the, uh, the, the stitches themselves. So to do that, uh, what I want to do is start another, get another 3D sketch. Let's get kind of oriented around here, and I'm going to hide the head. Uh, just makes things a little bit easier to see. Let's get uh, my line tool, and 
yeah, I can use that endpoint. That's probably fine. Uh, or I can you know, just make my own. Let's sketch upward. And then let's pick this endpoint. Let's pick the surface here. Let's make sure it's on surface. And then let's pick the spline and uh, the surface. Tell it we want it to be perpendicular. Oh, yeah, and if it bulks, it's probably because it's got it's got um, that in relation down here. So let's pick that, and let's just make sure that we're on surface and that we are uh, perpendicular uh, with the line. Yeah, it looks like we are. So now we should be able to. Uh, it's still throwing errors. Right, let's delete you. Let's make sure you're okay. Let's delete you. I, th I think it, yeah, I think it just merged those points. And, okay, there we go. Now we're now we're out. Yeah, I think it just doesn't like being uh, coincident or merged uh, with anything. So now I can uh, control pick our point. Let's do it on surface. Let's pick our line. Control pick here. Pick perpendicular. Yeah, now we're good. Um, And again, this thing does not necessarily have to be. Yeah, and in fact, I think if we make it, yeah, we try to make it coincident here. Okay, that time it liked it. Um, so yeah, it's one of those relation things. Lovely. Uh, so I'm just gonna hold down Control, uh, click, hold, and drag that line out. Let's pick our point here. Uh, let's pick our surface. On surface, let's pick the spline. And the, the control pick the surface, pick perpendicular, and then let's pick the point here, and let's pick our spline. Be coincident. All right, so now we're, yeah, we're pretty good there. Let's get a sense of our distance. That's kind of long. Let's move it in a little bit. Yeah. The thing is not wanting to drag. Let's see if I can move the line. Delete enough of these things till I kind of get it where I want it, and then add them back. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, and then lastly, let's pick both lines. I'm going to make them equal, and I'm going to make them construction geometry. Now let's get our spline tool and kind of mouse around till we're sort of looking somewhat normal to them. Click, hold, and drag a spline out. Let's get zoomed in. Let's grab one of the spline handles, move it up. And while I still have it selected, I'm going to hold down Control and pick this line and say I want to make it collinear. And let's do the same for the other side. Let's pick our spline handle. They're really hard to see against that gray. Hold down Control, pick this one, make collinear. And then I can just kind of pull that down. I want to get them. I want to squish them down fairly close. I do want the stitches to bump out a little bit. Um, that looks pretty good. And let's say OK to that. And then let's get moused around where we can see that thing a little better. Uh, let's come to our features, sweat boss base, circular profile. I know from past experience that about uh, 0.3 mils looks pretty good. Say that, and then uh, to pick here, let's do use, use our selection manager. I just want uh, select group, and I just want that entity. And right click and say OK. Let's X out of that, uh, and then let's say OK and see what we get. It might this might be a little bit too tight. I might need to make the uh, diameter a little bit bigger. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to. Yeah, it just can't quite handle it. Um, so let's edit that. Uh, let's make the diameter a little smaller, so about two, and let's make sure that our um, align with end faces should help. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yep. And oh, I know the problem I was running into is I had merge result check, and we definitely don't want that. Let's see. Okay, looks like it might be kinking up uh, just a little. 
Um, let's see, okay, and see what we get just to double check it. Yes, that's it's giving me a lot of segments, and that's going to result in a lot of triangles down the road. Let's see if we can um, see about editing the sketch a little bit. Maybe not pushing it in quite so far. Giving it a little more distance too. I don't want it sticking up too much, because then it won't look. You know, it'll look like some kind of. That's pretty good. Yeah, and right. Yeah, definitely nice and smooth now. I don't have those uh, segments on it. In fact, I might be able to bump up the uh, diameter a little bit. Right. Yeah, that looks that looks great. So now let's uh, uh, send that thing uh, along here, and then uh, I will uh, stop the video and start another one. So to do that, uh, we want to use a, a pa we want to pattern it, but we want to use a curve-driven pattern because we want to use this curve to drive uh, patterning this thing. So for our direction, let's pick our sketch, make sure it's pointed in the right way. If, you know, if this thing's not going the right way, you can change the direction on it but it looks pretty good right here uh, and then we'll need a face normal for it to work with so let's pick that and let's pick this face this is another reason for only doing half of it because you know, um, here we have two face normals and you can only use one um, and then for the bodies uh, that we want to send let's pick our sweep here and let's back out and take a look at it and that looks pretty good it's yeah, it's kind of far apart uh, so I could either you know, make these things a little bit longer, which is probably a good thing to do, but I could also maybe bump up the count on it a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I think I'll do a little both. I'll leave it bumped up on the count, and I'll change the um, sketch. Pull that out just a bit more. Okay, that added back in some of the seams, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, because yeah, that will definitely run the uh, triangle count up when we go to render this. Um, so I'm let's see, about out of time. So uh, for my for this for my recording, uh, so I will pick this up uh, in the next one.